Hello and welcome back to the channel of Rosie Touch. I am Rosie and today's drawing is for the first day of Mermaid. Woo! Um, so for Mermaid you can go online and find the official prompts. I cannot remember the website off the top of my head. It's probably something to do with Mermaid prompts <laughs> or Mermaid prompts. Um, but I decided since it was my first time attempting Mermaid that I would like to write my own list of prompts which will be at the end of the video if anyone is interested in looking at those. So the first one is me, meaning myself as a mermaid, um, because I just thought it'd be quite interesting to do. I don't really ever draw myself much, so that's a challenge in itself. And uh, I thought it'd be a good one to start with, as sort of maybe I can talk a bit about who I am, but I don't know, we'll see how this video and voiceover progresses. Uh, so, I'm doing some quick thumbnails at the beginning of this video. You can see that I've already drawn one where it's a mermaid, who is me, with a cat mermaid, who is my cat Imogen, and she's looking pretty annoyed with a paintbrush and an easel. Um, and then the second one is meant to be a self-conscious version of myself as a mermaid, so uh, because I'm not the slimmest thing around, and I'm a bit chonky, uh, <laughs> then she's like pulling her jumper down to try and like hide her stomach because in water your clothes would flow upwards with the movement. So I thought that'd be quite funny. And then the third one was just myself as a mermaid surrounded by things that I like to maybe be like, you know, sort of a meet the artist but meet the mermaid version. I don't know. Um, so I drew two larger images, one is the self-conscious one, which is when we start off with now, and then on the next page I drew the artist one bigger, like the painting underwater one bigger, because I thought it was quite a funny concept, and less, I don't know, I don't know how to say it, like, complicated in a way, because I don't actually know how the clothes would move underwater, and I was struggling to find references of how my clothes would move if I was wearing a jumper underwater. So I couldn't figure out how to make it look accurate and gave up on it. Um, so I went with the painting underwater one, which I thought was a funny concept anyway, um, as I like to do watercolors and this image itself is gonna be in watercolor. We get to that later on. Um, and watercolors obviously wouldn't work underwater. So if I was an artist mermaid underwater trying to paint watercolors, not gonna go well. So I thought that'd be quite a funny little silly concept to draw in. So this part is basically just you seeing my sketching brain at work and figuring out things, but it's kind of pointless because I don't actually go with this idea <laughs> in the end. But um, I thought I'd just time to maybe just talk a little bit about myself since the video is like 20 odd minutes long, which is quite a long art video. I apologize for trying my best to edit it down but I had to keep stopping and starting and you'll notice that the lighting keeps changes, keeps changes, that doesn't make sense, keeps changing as we go through this process because I had to stop recording, go live life and then come back to it at a later point. So it was over multiple days. It didn't take that many hours, to be honest. It's just, I had to keep stopping and starting. So it took many days rather than like a couple of hours that it should have done if I just had time to just sit and focus. But um. I'll explain partly why I struggled to do that in a moment. Uh, so, I'm Rosie, as I stated before. I am in my mid to late 20s. <laughs> um, and I have been drawing since I could hold a pencil. So roughly, I know that there's like photographic evidence of me painting and stuff and just drawing things at like 18 months old or slightly younger. So as soon as I could like pick up crayons and stuff, I was into art, art is amazing, is the best thing ever. Um, I've always been a lot more visual with my learning and stuff and I've had a pretty vivid imagination most of my life. Um, I struggle with reading and writing because I have dyslexia. I still did very well in all of my exams. I got A's and stuff. So, you know, you can kind of overcome it. It's cool, it doesn't stop you from being smart. Uh, it just made me not interested in like books and stuff when I was younger so instead of reading books to you know imagine a beautiful world and feel like I'm inside of it and whatnot I would draw them because I could sort of live that way in my mind without having to like visually read it from someone else's mind <laughs> if that makes any sense. Uh, so I guess I always had 
like a vivid imagination because of that because that was the only way I could express myself. I mean I was good at speaking, I'm very eloquent apparently even at a young age. I was using rather wide vocabulary or varied vocabulary and my teachers would comment on it and then my mum would be like well yeah she's not an idiot she just doesn't like reading and then later on we found out like because i'm dyslexic <laughs> so that makes sense um and then i carried on drawing through most of my youth like if you <laughs> went back in time to when i was younger and you went into the living room or the dining room or the kitchen of my old home you'd have just seen printer paper everywhere with like teeny tiny bits of drawings on. I never really grasped the idea of multiple images on one page till I got much older because uh, if it went wrong I was like this piece of paper is ruined and I'd have to just start again in my little mind on a new fresh piece of paper so I didn't have to look at the horrendousness that I had done. Uh, very wasteful but <laughs> I have learned from that and I don't do that anymore. Um, Oh yeah, here I'm drawing myself and I'm trying to make myself a little bit of a belly because I have a little bit of a belly in the real world. I didn't draw the hands very well because hands are hard and I waited till later on to struggle with that but it was just the basic idea and concept of how I wanted it to look when it gets on the final piece of paper um, and I'm doing like, I know that typically when you're a mermaid and you're beautiful you'd have like seashell bra type thing because that's what Ariel and stuff has but that would be super uncomfortable so I decided I would design a halter neck type seaweed bra because <laughs> it'd be much more comfortable for myself to wear um, and then I wear glasses all the time because I'm blind so she's wearing glasses, she being me and then I also had to draw my cat companion who is my uh, friend in real life, my cat I love her, she is my child um, so I thought I'd draw her as a cat fish because <laughs> you know it just, it's, she's part of my life. She is in this video because she is a brat and kept standing on everything. So you might see her multiple times. And speaking of cats, there is currently a cat at the side, which is Spex, who is my little cat character dude. And he is there because um, my head kept getting in the way of this shot. And I didn't know that until I was editing this video. I didn't want you guys getting distracted or looking at parts of my face from a weird angle so I put in his face, face instead um, and just sized him up. So hopefully you will focus more on the movement of my hand and what is happening in the drawing than on the corner where there's slight movement behind a big weird smiley cat man. Cat man? Sorry, just smiley cat. Um, but yeah, I did the sketching like official sketching on this piece of multimedia paper I'm gonna say it says it's watercolor paper but it acts more like multimedia paper um, off camera because I was struggling with the hands and stuff you can see all the rubbing out markings where I was going like wrong a lot so I um, did it off camera and then I thought I'd just film outlining it so you can see the lines that I want you to see coming to life and being born or whatever um, and I reference stuff for like one of the first times ever pretty much immediately so like I referenced all the different corals and things as I was designing it so I didn't have to struggle as much and that made things much easier. Um, I then decided for some reason to do really complicated coral in the bottom right corner. I don't know why I decided to punish myself this way but I did. It looks really cool and I'm really happy with it but my god it was a faff. So I don't even think I recorded all of that because it was just drawing a lot of different sized weird almost circles for a very, very long time <laughs> as you'll see in a bit. So didn't record all that because it would have been super boring um, and I don't think I cut out a ton from this video. I probably could have cut out a lot more and I'm sure someone in the comments will tell me that it's too long and that I need to cut more out but whatevs, don't care. Um, I just wanted to get this done and finished because I managed to finish painting it last night and today is actually the 1st of May whilst I'm recording this so if I don't get it edited and voiceovered and rendered and uploaded now then it's going to be a day late and that's going to annoy me because I want to try and keep on top of it. I don't think all of my mermaid pictures are going to be as intricate as this and I don't know how many of them I'm actually going to film and put on YouTube because I overall want to stick to a schedule of Wednesdays and Sundays for uploads um, but obviously with Mermaid I might do more within the week and I'd like to try and upload them on the actual day that 
is the prompt word, but we'll see how that happens, see how we go on that one. Um, but yes, so I'm quite happy with how the face, fresh, the facial expressions turned out on both myself and Imogen in this image. Uh, I feel like I depict myself being quite artist enraged very well and she's all like yay fish and chasing them so you know very typical <laughs> and it's nice and cartoony which I quite like but there's lots of intricate details and sort of random places uh, but anyway I don't know where I was up to about talking about myself so this is a little bit awkward oh you can see like the stupidly intricate cor coral bit that I do and it's like why did I pick this? I picked it because in the picture it was pink and I was like, that'll look pretty against the blues and stuff and be a nice contrast. So I made myself suffer with drawing some of these things. Um, and I wanted to make this image humorous, I suppose, is something else I should mention, uh, which is why she's using like sea snails and starfish to hold her paper on. And one of them's like, ah, and falling off because uh, the, as you'll see later, watercolor doesn't work underwater. So I've got it like spewing up in a big cloud. I don't know if spewing is the right word, but billowing up, there we go, in a big cloud. And uh, the little starfish is like, oh no, and trying to like get away from it. Cause you know, he doesn't want to have watercolor breathed in. I don't think anyone does. Watercolor is not good in large quantities for the environment, I imagine, underwater. I don't know fully what toxins are in it, but no, don't do it. So, yeah, it's a silly picture, it's not real, which is why it's okay <laughs> to do. Um, and for the painting, for, don't, for the painting, I've done a lot of, uh, I'm using my little cheapy water brushes that I got off of wish.com. They were like, I think a couple of pounds. I can't remember exactly, like three or four pounds or something. And I got three of them. Might have been cheaper than that. I can't remember. I think with postage and packaging, it was like three or four pounds. And then I got three with various sizes. They're like little tiny travelly ones. So there's barrels a lot shorter than some you can get, but they have different like tip sizes, which is what I needed. So there's a really fine one, there's a broad one, and there's a medium one. So that's very useful for what I needed because uh, covering up this large area, I needed a bigger tip to do it because it would have taken forever with the smaller one. And later on, I used the smaller one when I should have been using the like bigger one, but I just didn't swap over for whatever reason. I must have been in the art zone and just didn't think to change that. Um, but I guess talking about me again, so as I said, used to draw all the time, made mess with paper everywhere, slightly wasteful, not so wasteful anymore. <laughs> and then like all through primary school or elementary school for Americans, I suppose, and middle school-ish. Like we go from primary school and then at year, age 10, we go on to secondary school, but you guys do like a middle school thing, so it's different. But anyway, so from age like five to 10, I still love drawing, did it every day, did it all the time, tried to learn as much as I could, had those typical awful like learn to draw manga books, <laughs> was obsessed with cartoons. Um, I was slightly more into realism drawing at that point for some reason, so I used to draw a lot of realistic animals and like if you asked me to do it now I'd be so pants at it, I'd be rubbish, but back then it was like draw me a badger and it'd be pretty much spot on, so don't know what happened to those skills. <laughs> but then as I got into secondary school, first couple of years was fine, still loved drawing, still did it all the time, even did it in class and got told off and had it confiscated a fair few times which used to annoy me because some of that stuff was like, I really want that back and I've never gotten it back because it was confiscated for good. Uh, and they do, they've done studies now to be like, if you doodle whilst you're doing something else, you're often better at concentrating and stuff. So really I should be doodling now so I can concentrate on this voiceover, but I suck at that. Uh, <laughs> I just suck at voiceovers. So anyway, so I had all that stuff confiscated, was annoyed, blah, blah, blah. Then we had a lot of like we had art lessons finally, which I was excited about. I was like, yay, finally art lessons. But art lessons in secondary school, or at least for the one I went to, kind of sucked because it was all very much like, we're gonna recreate this person's images or style or whatever and write essays about them. And it was a lot of stuff that I wasn't massively interested in. We didn't always learn about like, you know, life drawing type stuff or form or like lighting or weight. I was always just like, ooh, his Frank Stella paint like him. This is Vincent van Gogh. Try paint something like him. And I was like, meh, just didn't enjoy that very much. 
and then they didn't like when you did your own sort of stuff when you like given your own project briefs to do and the way you might have taken it like they weren't always approving of a more cartoony style which is what I liked to draw in or an anime style which is also what I liked to draw in they weren't so keen on that kind of thing so it's a bit annoying um and that kind of made me like the whole homework coursework stress thing and not being able to draw what I want and learn what I want whilst in school so then I'd have to spend time when I needed to do homework learning myself that used to annoy me so I kind of fell out of love with that in that respect but when I was 12 I picked up a graphics tablet because my dad had one I don't know why my dad had one but he had one and he had like a really old version of photoshop so I picked it up started messing around on the family computer with that and taught myself how to use it by like using tutorials and things online um and then fell in love with digital art and completely abandoned traditional art for a very very long time <laughs> which I do not recommend you should keep up with both uh, because a lot of traditional art can help you with your digital art and I feel digital art these days were very much like it has to be perfect first time I can edit the lines to look super crisp and amazing and beautiful and alter all of the perspective and stuff so it's perfect and looks really accurate and I feel like sometimes that actually makes your images look more stiff and a bit lifeless because they're just like over edited um, and you don't have like that movement and flow and freedom that you can get when you're doing like sketchy stuff on paper um, so you, I feel like you need to do both and I'm getting back into traditional as we can see on the screen with my watercoloring uh, now after many 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 years <laughs> of not doing it so well roughly 15 years I think I'm not doing like any traditional art so that's a bit silly um but so I did a lot of digital art then and sort of like fell into the Gaia online world and did a lot of anime stuff for people and avatars and things and then after that phase when I was about 13 14 I started going on a website called Wolf Home, which is a 2D chat website based around wolves and canines and you had like little avatars and you could change what poses they were in when you were in different chat rooms and stuff. And I went on it because like some of my friends were on it and whatever and we like hung out on there and it was cool and it was fun. Um, and you had your own character, your own wolf, your own dog, whatever, but it had to be like canine based for it to be allowed in the public- Hi Cat, she's in the images now- for it to be in the public rooms. And um, so I drew a lot of wolves and dogs and stuff and became more of a furry artist for a while in the like safe for work sense, not the not safe for work sense because I was like a kid. And uh, oh, we're coming up in the video where like, as you can see, Imogen being a massive pain in the butt and won't get off my artwork. And there's a little clip that I've inserted where I pan up because at one point after trying to drink my water that I had to then remove from her and take away so she couldn't drink the dirty water, she decided, okay, if you won't let me lie on your painting and you won't let me drink your water, I'm gonna lie on your paint set. And I was like, oh, great, how do I work around this? Don't worry, I removed her and cleaned her off so she didn't have any toxic stuff on her, but it's about to start. Round about now. So bratty cat aside, <laughs> yeah, so I started drawing a lot more animal stuff and obviously as the website progressed and private rooms were made and you were allowed to have uh, various animals in those rooms, I started branching out and drawing different animals, still mostly based around wolves and things, so she's still being a brat in the images in the video. <laughs> so <laughs> I did a lot of animals, I got into that, I did a lot of anthropomorphic stuff, so I was alright at drawing bodies, but not so much human faces which is why I'm trying to like do them more now because I'm really not used to drawing humans uh, I suppose mer people are close to humans if you want them to be more humanoid uh, I will be doing some later in the month which aren't as humanoid they'll be more sort of what I imagine actual mer people could be if they existed so more fish like <laughs> in their appearances um, but yeah and then Lots of drama happened on like those websites and I was getting pressure from people when I was doing commissions and I was only charging like two or three dollars a commission and they took me like a couple of hours so I should have been charging more for it but I didn't have faith in my artwork so I didn't charge more and then people just 
like expected free stuff and they expected, especially if they were like friends in quotations, they expected lots of free things. They expected it to be done really quickly because I did work quite fast, but then if I didn't, like if I worked really quickly for a period of time and then slowed down, people would be like, why aren't you working as fast as you used to? And they'd get annoyed and they'd want you to like do stuff really quick. And I was going through a very tough time in my social life in the real world and in a relationship that I was in that was a very toxic, bad relationship at a very young age, <laughs> which lasted way too long. Um, so I often sort of lost motivation to do it. I was also getting bullied by my partner at the time about the artwork that I was doing because he was like, you're drawing animal people, you're weird, and um, insinuated that like I was the not safe for work kind of furry. Um, whereas like if I were to say I'm a furry I'd be the safe for work kind of fairy. like I like drawing anthropomorphic animals and I like feral animals too and I like that sort of artwork I, I appreciate the skill that goes into it and I think it looks really cool and the characters are really fun and stuff and they're fun to draw but I'm not personally like I don't enjoy the not safe for work stuff in the sense of like I get my rocks off to it or anything it's just not me <laughs> If it's you, cool beans, do you. You're not hurting anyone anyway, or as long as you're not hurting anyone, I should say, that's fine. But for me, it's just not my thing. Um, so, I mean, I draw it, but I wouldn't get excited about it if I drew it with someone. I'd just be like, yeah, it's drawing, cool. I think as an artist, you kind of get numbed from nudity and stuff though, because you kind of just become like, so that has to be that shape and that has to hang that way and that has to be that size. <laughs> you don't really think about it as like, these are naked body parts, how sexy, or any of that kind of stuff. It just doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> but anyway, that aside, uh, so fell out of love with art because I was getting bullied at school. I was getting teachers annoyed at me for not paying attention, even though I was still paying attention. I was just also drawing because their lessons were kind of like mind numbing if you weren't doing something else on the side personally I found anyway um, and then my partner was being very mean about it and that sucked <laughs> so I kind of just fell out of love with art and stopped doing it even though I took it at A level and I took it for an access to higher education course when I didn't finish my A levels um, because I had a bit of a mental breakdown at 19 and just left school and like took a year out to exist kind of um, and was diagnosed with like depression and stuff so that was fun and then I went to university eventually to do my like degree which is in illustration and animation which I did for three years a uh, very good time still wish I had taken advantage of it more because like I kind of wasn't in the right mindset at the time and I wasn't focused because all the things were going on and I was going through like depression and anxiety and I was being a big freak about all that stuff so I didn't focus on my degree as much didn't get the highest mark you can get but I got like the second highest mark you can get so you know one ends uh did my best at the time and sort of got back into drawing a bit more but it was still like it was a deadline it was a chore it was bleh. so I didn't like it in that sense and then it's only, it's been like, what, how many years since I left university? It's been three or four since I left university and only now being like, art is fun. So getting back in, back in, I speak, getting back in to art that way. Um, and I'm hoping that Mermaid will help me be like silly and creative and push myself, especially since I have to draw a lot of humanoid type things as well. Um, it's not going to be good practice for feet, that's for sure, but for hands and faces <laughs> and like poses and fluidity and movement and lighting and stuff, hopefully it'll be good for all of that stuff. Um, but we are coming up to the end of the video, so I should probably shut up. Um, and I will talk more in the future about things. And I suppose the only other thing to add is the reason that I struggle sometimes with getting art out and getting videos out in general is because I recently was diagnosed with fibromyalgia which just kind of all over sucks and makes you tired and sore so that's a thing <laughs> but anyway thank you very much for watching if you did hope you enjoyed the video if you did please feel free to leave a like or comment down below letting me know how I can prove what you'd like to see yada 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 and goodbye